All right, in chapter 10, hopefully this chapter is a little bit easier for you. So there's not really any complete worksheets that we need to fill out to memorize because there's not that many topics to understand. In this video, we're going to go over the controllable margin and return on investment. Just two equations that we need to know. The first one, controllable margin, is your contribution margin. And you're going to subtract out those controllable fixed costs. For return on investment, we're looking at taking that controllable margin. And we're going to divide that by your average operating asset. They're always going to give these to you. You don't need to be concerned about learning how to calculate your average operating assets. So for example, we're going to go through exercise 10-17, and we're going to use this information to find those return on investments. Now I'm going to take you back a couple chapters where we could just go into that very simple income statement and find our contribution margin. Then we're going to subtract out that controllable fixed cost to get down to our controllable margin. This is helpful to fill out and just kind of keeps you on track. So my sales, I know, are 300, 300 million or 3 million. All those zeros. Subtract out those variable costs to get down to my contribution margin. Part should be a review, so now we're just going to subtract out that 600000 of controllable fixed costs to get down to our controllable margin. It's always a good idea to get in the habit of finding out what is those ratios, what is that contribution margin ratio. It's all based on sales, so on sales is always 100%. I can figure out my variable cost just by taking my variable costs, dividing by that sales, which gives me 65%, which means if I take that contribution margin and divide by sales, it will give me 35%. I'm gonna need that information later, so I thought I would just set it all up now so that it's easily accessible when I'm trying to find out all the information that I need. So let's look how we use these numbers to compute our return on investment. So remember, return on investment, I'm taking that controllable margin and I'm going to divide by my average operating assets. So here, I'm going to just pull those numbers down. My controllable margin is 450,000. My average operating assets are 5 million. I do those calculations, it gives me a return of investment of 9%. Now I can move down and I can look and say, well, let's look at some various changes that are happening and see what impact that's going to have on my return on investment. The first change would be an increase in sales of 300,000. Since there's no change in that contribution margin percentage, I can look and see how much that's going to impact me by using that contribution margin ratio. So if my sales increased by $300,000, that would mean my contribution margin ratio, if I do that math, that my contribution margin would increase by 105000 I take that increase in sales and times it by my contribution margin ratio, and I know my contribution margin would increase by $105,000. And since my controllable fixed costs are not changing, that's also going to give me an increase in my controllable margin of $105,000. So my new controllable margin is going to be 555,000. Now, if I want to find what my return on investment is, all I'm gonna do is take that new number and divide by my average operating assets, which is going to give me 
a new return on investment of 11.1%. Now what happens using that same data if my variable cost will decrease by 150,000? Well, if I can reduce my variable cost, that's going to bring that contribution margin up by 150,000 and in turn bring up that controllable margin by 150,000. So all I'm going to do here is start with my original controllable margin, add that increase in, which gives me a new controllable margin of 600,000. I'm going to divide that by my average operating assets, which have not changed, to give me a new return on investment of 12%. And finally, I can look at that last change. What if I could reduce my average operating assets by 4%? Well, first of all, let's see what that equals. If I can reduce my average operating assets, which are 5 million, and I'm going to reduce those by 4%, that's going to give me a decrease in my average operating assets of 200,000. So I'm just going to plug that information in my new average, my new average operating assets would be this 5 million. Oops. I'm going to subtract out that 200,000 change since I'm reducing those by 4% to give me a new average operating assets of 4.8 million. All I'm gonna do is plug that into my new equation where my controllable margin goes back to that original 450,000. I'm gonna divide by 4.8 million to give me that new return on investment, which is gonna be 9.38%. So hopefully this helps kind of walk you through some of those um, equations and how to use them with the data that's given. If you have any questions, let me know.